Ishaka Community Church family with pleasure would love to inform you that we'll start premiering our midweek online series called Morning Dew. Our pastoral team has prepared an amazing message just for you. This series will run every Wednesday from 6.30 to 7 a.m. Don't miss out on this amazing and wonderful experience to kickstart your day. We would love to keep in fellowship with you, grow together spiritually and pray for you. Ishaka Community Church, connecting people to their destiny. Good morning, saints. Welcome to the last Wednesday of the month, um, our special edition of Morning Dew. It is, let's see, September the 28th, and we're so glad that y'all joined us. If you've been here with us over the last several weeks, my name is Joelle and Paul. I've been here <clears throat> on a mission uh, for Uganda, for the Lord here in Uganda. Let me get that straight. <laughs> We've, we've started each morning uh, with a prayer, so let's go ahead and uh, just jump right in and get started. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and just praise your holy name. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and the sacrifice that he made for us on the cross. He paid a debt that we could never, ever repay, Father. We love you and we ask that you be with each and every one of us everyone that's listening to us this morning uh, as we study your word look at, uh, read your word and uh, apply it to our lives father we we want our lives to glorify you and in all that we do but we are desperately dependent upon you upon the holy spirit leading us and guiding us I know that you're with us. Uh, your name is Emmanuel, which is God is with us. Thank you for that. Thank you for waking us up, keeping us safe. Please uh, be with us as we study your word. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> it was a little chilly this morning, so I had to stop and get me some coffee. Me... We're going to start with our devotion. <clears throat> and it reads... Open your mind and heart, your entire being, to receive my love in full measure. So many of my children limp through their lives, st lives starved for love because they haven't learned the art of receiving. This is essentially, essentially an act of faith, believing that I love you with boundless, everlasting love. The art of receiving is also a discipline, training your mind to trust me, come close to me with confidence. Remember that the evil one is the father of lies, learning to recognize his deceptive intrusions into your thoughts. One of his favorite deceptions is undermining your confidence in my unconditional love. Fight back against these lies. Do not let them go and challenge. Resist the devil in my name and he will slink away. <clears throat> Draw near to me and my presence will envelop you with love. Wow, that is powerful. That is wonderful wonderful message that we get to hear today we're going to start our, our, the first verse that we're going to look at is ephesians uh, chapter 3 verses 16 through 19 so if you have your bibles with me let's turn over to ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you be rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, width length, and depth, and height, to know the love of Christ which passes, passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Glory to God. <clears throat> Let's go over to uh, Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, we're going to look at verse um, 14 through 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens... Jesus Christ, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. 
For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We'll stop right there. There's some more verses, but we'll get into those in just a little bit. Let's just <clears throat> take what we've gone over the last several weeks and break this down a little bit. When it starts out saying, open your mind and your heart, it's hard to have your mind open to the things of the Lord if it is cluttered with the things of this world. So carving out time in the mornings is especially important to start your day um, putting the Lord first giving him the first of your time so your mind can be open to what he has to, uh, so you can receive what his word is telling you and what he wants you to have. Same thing with your heart. If you have bitterness in your heart, if you have unforgiveness in your heart, if you have things that are not of God but of this world in your heart, it's hard to open your heart. You can't, in fact, you can't open your heart uh, <clears throat> if it's filled with lust of this world. Um, Jesus wants a relationship with everyone, and he has done everything for us to have that relationship. But he's also given us free will, and we have to make that choice if to have that relationship and to ask Jesus to come into our life and to save us. And he takes the heart that we started with, just a heart of stone, and gives us a heart of flesh so it can be open to his word. Then it says, your entire being to receive my love in full measure. I don't know that we'll ever be able to receive his love in full measure while we're on this side of heaven. Um, his love is never ending. The depths of it is too deep for our minds to even comprehend, but he loves us that much. So that many, uh, it says, many of my children limp through their lives starved for love. And we talked about that early in another session about being plugged into the wrong things, um, tr looking for that love. And the way that God created us is that, that emptiness or that desire for love and fulfillment can only, only be satisfied by the Lord Jesus Christ. And until he is in our life and can satisfy that we will search the world over and never find any th any type of contentment oh it might be you might find some temporary contentment in something but uh, you're not going to find lasting love or hope or joy or glory or anything uh, until that is fulfilled it can only be fulfilled with god <clears throat> uh, they have it says that we live alone because we haven't learned the art of receiving one we like to receive things that are nice or we love to receive. And it's easier to receive things that we feel worthy of having. It's hard to receive, it's harder to receive things that we don't feel worthy of. And one of the hardest things that I have faced in my walk with Christ is receiving, um, being able to forgive myself. Because they haven't, it says they haven't learned the art of receiving. It's easy to receive things that we feel worthy of, uh, that we think that we deserve. We actually don't deserve anything. It's only by God's grace that we have anything, uh, especially His love, His grace, His mercy. In my own walk with Christ, it has been time, from time to time harder to receive His forgiveness forgiveness of my sins and learning to receive that forgiveness and it is a process of learning or it was for me I had to learn to receive I had to re learn to receive his love and his forgiveness and in turn love and receive my and uh, love myself and forgive myself that was difficult and it says that this essentially is an act of faith <clears throat> uh, believing what we can't see you know, the upside down life of Jesus Christ. Uh, most people say, I'll see it when I believe it. Um, they're not, or, you know, when they, they've got to see something before they'll believe it. 
A lot of times we believe things before we ever see it come to fruition because the Lord, it's either in the Lord's Word or He's put it in our heart or um, it's a character of God that we believe regardless whether, whether we see it or not. The art of receiving is also a discipline, training your mind to trust me. Come close to me with confidence. We, ha we have to, when we start our work with Christ, we are in training. We are Christ followers, and it does take time. And it does require us to spend time in the Word and time with Him and time with fellow Christians um, and to grow in Christ so we can learn and learn to train our mind. In past episodes, we talked about how the, our adversary uh, will come come to us uh, in our mind and shoot, uh, maybe shoot thoughts into our minds that are negative or shame, uh, inflicted, trying to inflict shame or guilt or uh, condemnation. We know those are not of the Lord and you have to train your mind so once they once you catch that thought to stop it and cast it down in the name of Jesus uh, and not take that not to take that in remember that the evil one is the father of lies I recently finished a book um, and it was it talked about the father of lies and you know, we've talked earlier in other episodes that he comes at Christ followers when we're tired, um, uh, maybe when we're sick or uh, frustrated. He can, uh, if he will try to frustrate us. He uh, wants us. He will lie to us about our our passions. We may have like a passion for Christ or a passion. Uh, to further the kingdom of God, but the adversary will come at us and dangle a passion of the world to see if we will go that direction instead of following our passion for Christ. He, w the father of lies, does not want us to have focus. We can. Uh, he does not want us to have focus in our walk with Christ because if God is leading you to a particular city to do a particular mission or a particular carry out a particular project, if the devil can get you off focus and get you busy doing this or busy doing that, you lose your focus, then you're not strategic in your um, walk with the Lord and what he would have you to do. The father of lies will come after your identity. He will, he will, he will tell you that you're separated from God. Uh, he will uh, tell you that Jesus does not love you. Uh, he will tell you anything to uh, get you from knowing how uh, rich and uh, God is in His mercy to us and how much He loves us. You know, we did not uh, receive a spirit of slavery, um, a spirit of fear. Uh, Christ gave us, we are spirit, we are, I'm an adopted daughter. Uh, when I cry out to Him, I'm a father. And as, since I am adopted into that kingdom, <clears throat> I am co-heirs with Christ. Uh, these are my brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, there are, yes, cultural differences among people, regions, countries, continents. Uh, but the blood of Christ is what covers us all. We are the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. You know, and... Both, if we were to uh, suffer with Christ, we will be glorified in Him. We, he has engraved us in the in the palm of His hands. The Father of Lies uh, will come after to try to uh, put distension in your family. He does not want a family uh, to be a, a unit. You know, in the Bible, how it describes a marriage where uh, the man is the head of the household and the wife is submissive to her husband. A, a marriage on earth is a, kind of depicts the symbol of God and, and Jesus as God is the head and, um, and uh, like Christ was or Christ is and Christ's followers were supposed to be submissive uh, to Christ as the bride is to her husband. And it's the ultimate, act, uh, ultimate of love. He does not want your family, uh, if he can dis uh, part your family or put dissension in there, he will. Um, 
The devil will try to use your past against you, and you cannot allow him. He'll bring up every failure you ever had. <laughs> He'll remind you in the most inopportune times the things that have done in the past, or something that you've done in the past that you've repented for, that you've asked for forgiveness and has never occurred again. It's hard for him. He does not want you to forget it. Um, these, these things that we uh, have to pray over. You know, God is so rich in mercy and He loves us so much that, you know, that He sent His Son to die for us. Uh, he, the devil will also come, um, he will try to make you fearful of things um, and he will try to impart fear, bring fear into your life uh, to paralyze you so you can't walk with Christ in victory. Excuse me, he will uh, question you about your motives um, he will try to remind you of your past hurts you know when if I was to you know hit my hand I, know I may have a little uh, a, a bruise on it but my skin's not broken and I heal relatively flat, fast it was a minor infraction but if someone if I was to be in a car crash of, and be injured severely it would take me longer to heal um he wants, he, the Father of Lies wants to expose our hurts and to keep us hurting instead of us healing through Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is committed to freeing us uh, from that. He died to set us free. It was freedom that Christ died to set us free. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us and, to proc- and we proclaim release from being uh, held captive. It, um, we, we overcome uh, evil with good. We uh, overcome with forgiving others. I've been cho- you got to remind yourself that you have been chosen by God, holy and beloved, and put on a heart of compassion, kindness and humility, gentleness and patience, bearing one another with Jesus. Uh, that helps, that can help you forgive others as Jesus has forgiven you and forgiven me. The next, the next portion is that, you know, um, do not let them go and try to resist the devil in, in my name. You know, if it's, there was a controversy that uh, we talked about at church. Could the devil read your mind? And I've always been taught that he could not. That he could impart, he could imp- try to impart things to us, but that he could not read your mind. Um, when Jesus was tempted, he spoke out loud, it is written. So having scripture memorized or written down, so when things come against you that you know are not of God, you can verbally resist the devil and rebuke the devil in the Je- name of Jesus, and he has to leave you. He, ha- he has to slink away from you. Drawing, uh, it says to draw near to me and my presence will envelop you with love. It, the, his Bible, the word tells us if we draw near to him, he will draw near to us. Sometimes I don't feel as close to the Lord as other times. And I search myself, I search my heart to see if there's any uh, unconfessed sin in my life. Uh, if that, if, if there is, if the Holy Spirit reveals there's unconfessed sin in my life, I get that. Um, out and in the open with the Lord and we we discuss it we talk about it Um, and then sometimes I just have to be disciplined and obedient into what I know to do regardless of how I feel Uh, whether it's doing my Bible study or my meditation time uh, memorizing scripture because we can't go on how we feel our our feelings are fickle Jesus Christ is the same is the same Yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. His word, his word does not change. His word is living, and it will reveal more and more to us as we study the scripture and as we go about, but it does, it does not change. That's why it's so important to know scripture, uh, to read it and incorporate it in your life, because when life happens as it does, we need God and God's word. There was a lady that came and spoke with us earlier and she was asking for prayer and she had a situation that she wanted us to pray over. It was very unfortunate um, 
situation, and it was, uh, I certainly prayed for her and her children, but she's not following Christ. Um, I couldn't talk to her about spiritual principles, or, um, or I, mean, I spoke to her about it, but she's not implementing the tools that Jesus gave us to live this life. And unfortunately, it's in a situation um, that I pray that God moves on, but I can't wait to, to hear how that um, turns out for her. It's just I know that we're much, uh, life is hard enough just on a good day. Um, I can't imagine not living life without the Lord's help. I, I pray for her, for His grace and mercy on her. This edition is uh, the last one of the month um, of September. Uh, we've appreciated everyone's time. As you go about your day, whether you're going to work or doing your chores or uh, tending to your children, I pray that uh, God will just bless you and keep you safe. We thank you uh, again for tuning in to Morning Dew. Uh, let's have a word of prayer as we um, end our day today session. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for giving us this day that you have made. Um, we will be glad in it. Thank you for your word that is always teaching us, always ministering to us. Thank you so much for loving us as you do. Be with everyone that goes to work this morning and uh, return them home safely to their families this afternoon. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. See you next time. Ishaka Community Church family, with pleasure, would love to inform you that we'll start premiering our midweek online series called Morning Dew. Our pastoral team has prepared an amazing message just for you. This series will run every Wednesday from 6.30 to 7 a.m. Don't miss out on this amazing and wonderful experience to kickstart your day. We would love to keep in fellowship with you, grow together spiritually, and pray for you. Ishaka Community Church, connecting people to their destiny.